Yankee right here one thing. <laughs> so one, one guy loves them. day that we have the opportunity to gather in a country full of freedom and conduct the business of our beloved county. Lord, we remember this morning the two Pennsylvania State Police officers tragically killed in the line of duty during their early hours this past Monday. We ask you to please comfort their families and friends as they pick up the pieces of their shattered lives. We ask you to please protect all law enforcement each and every day. May your hand provide them safety so they return home to their loved ones after their shift of duty. Next Tuesday, we will be remembering the National Vietnam War Veterans Day. It was on that date, 1973, combat and combat support units withdrew from South Vietnam. Slightly more than two million Americans served in uniform in Vietnam and Southeast Asia. They traveled across the world to fight oppression in the name of freedom. We publicly thank and support and honor those veterans for their service. We thank you for the heroes that sacrificed for our freedoms. Father, lead us in this meeting, that your wisdom will be shown. Grant us your knowledge so that we make decisions that will be in accordance with your will. May there be a blessing to our constituents. We praise you for all our blessings. These things we humbly ask in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, we'll convene the Commission Moon at this time. And ask for approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. I'll move to approve. 
I'll second. All in favor say aye. 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 So carried. That's for public comment on agenda items only at this time. Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to reports. 2.1, Maya. Yes, good morning, Commissioners. Um, the item I have before you is to acknowledge the list of contracts that were approved by the Director of Administration for the month of February, and there were a total of 11 contracts. Okay. Got a motion to accept those contracts. I'll move to approve. I'll second. Any questions or discussion? No, we have mostly, let me see, we have the LTS Regional Medical Director, Exterior Window Cleaning, Barber Services. I assume that's at the prison. That's correct, yeah. Right. Uh, some other things at the prison. Pretty perfunctory bridge preservation project. Okay. Okay. Well, there's the Aye. 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 So carried. Thank Two you. Point. Thank you. 2.2, Brady. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, Good morning, we're here to ratify the check run that was completed today for invoices due through March 30th, 2022, in the amount of $371,465.51. For, $371, of which $130,499.33 were general funded by our general fund, 35% roughly. $117,802.42 were grants and other sources, or roughly 32%. And the remaining 33%, uh, $123,163.76 was funded by RMS. Okay, I have a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. Any questions or discussion? You know, I wonder if we should have her write that on the agenda. We don't. We don't have that paperwork in front of us anymore. You know, in terms of the uh, what the gross amount was, and the. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be a. A dissertation. You, are you guys? Is she not threatening this? Yeah. For you guys we have each that. week. We we sign it, but we don't have a copy that we bring with us. The, yeah, we, we don't the have other copy with us. Yeah. We okay. review it and sign it. We review okay. and sign it. We, have, okay. we can see the breakdown. You, you, then, then I wrote a bunch of questions, and maybe uh, maybe that's the one we should have passed. I didn't. I saw I, no, I, I saw it. I saw your question. Oh, okay. I signed it. Right. No, but, but also for the public. I mean, I'm just sitting here thinking if you're someone who's trying to follow the meeting, whenever numbers are read at a meeting, yeah. It's, it's hard. Yeah. I mean, even the way you read the number at the beginning, you you, you it, knew that it yeah, was. It's hard to write them down if right. you're trying to. Yeah. Uh, so I just think it would be it would be helpful, you know. It's, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. If I have it in time, because lots of times with the timing and when we get the report signed or whatever, to get the number on the agenda. But I'll try to, um, if I can, get that to my end in enough time that we can get it added on. Numbers and percentages, yeah. like you have on the back page. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we maybe because we used to scan. I think this yeah. page yeah. and exactly. make it part of the agenda, and then that sort of stopped at some point. Yeah, so. that'd be perfect. Okay. That's on there. Thank you. Great. Yep. Thank you. Thanks, Brandy. All fair side. Aye. 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 So carried. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to uh, three point one information items. Sydney Moore. She's going to talk to us about the spot and lantern fly. Good morning. Uh, hi. Before I go up there, just do any of you guys want some handouts for spotted lantern fly? Okay, I'll just start passing it around and feel free to take them because there's, there's really good information here. There's three different handouts here. Hello, Commissioners. Good morning. Hello. Uh, my name is Sydney Moore. I work for the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture. I've been in my position for about seven years now and uh, Matt reached out because somebody wanted to talk about spotted lanternfly. Mm -hmm. So do you guys know much about spotted lanternfly? Mm -hmm. As it is? Some a little bit, yeah. Okay, so Lake Hummie County did have some fines of spotted lanternfly this past year. Um, unfortunately, the quarantine is going to be expanded. It's expanded every year in March, and we are talking the day before the quarantine expansion. So the press release for the quarantine expansion will be tomorrow. So the updated quarantine map, you guys should have one of those. 
uh, it's not going to be inclusive of the new counties that will be added to the quarantine. I can't positively say that like Cumming County will be added because we've had people go out and they were removing egg masses, they were destroying the bugs, so we can't say whether we have an active population yet, but you will know tomorrow whether Lycoming County is added or not. Okay. So I guess I'll just go over the life cycle. We'll talk about the quarantine a little bit and any questions that you, you have, feel free to interrupt and ask. And Cindy, can I just mention that the reason we asked you to come yes. through Matt Long through the Conservation District is we wanted this to be an opportunity for you to speak to the public. Okay. As much as to us, but more importantly to the public, because obviously the press is here and so forth. So any information you want them to know about, now is your opportunity. Well, make sure that you get these. Um, these are Penn State Extension handouts. Make sure anybody who wants them gets them because this is directed for the public, all of these handouts. And any information you want to know about spotted lanternfly, you should definitely go to Penn State Extension because they are the biggest partner for Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture when it comes to outreach for the public. So if everybody has this first handout, I'm sorry, I didn't know I had PowerPoint accessibility or who would have done that. But so the first handout is Part one, spotted lanternfly permit training, invasion of spotted lanternfly. This is the background of spotted lanternfly. Uh, you can look through this if you want, but I'm just gonna hit on some points in here. It was first discovered in Berks County in 2014. Um, it is an invasive species. It is, uh, it's main, it's very happy in China. It is not considered an invasive species in China, Bangladesh, countries like that, South Korea. Um, it has a natural balance in the ecosystem over there, but it was introduced to us um, in the U.S. in 2014 and first found in Berks County. Um, since then, it has spread to, like, we're up over half of our counties are considered infested. Um, like I said, it's native in Asia, but it's, it's kind of unchecked over here. It doesn't have any real natural predators. So if you go through this packet, it's about an inch long, half an inch wide, most of the time when you see this bug, its wings are going to be tucked up onto its back. You're not going to see it with its, its wings flared out with that pretty red um, wing pattern that everybody likes to show in the media. Its wings will be tucked up most of the time when you see it. It is a leaf hopper, so uh, most of the time it's, it's tucked up and it, and it bounces around. How it feeds is it has a proboscis, which is a piercing sucking mouth part, which probes the tree and sucks up the nutrients of that tree. And it's important to note that it does not bite or sting people. However, uh, it does have qualities like stink bug and box elder bug, ladybugs. They swarm like the south side of your house when it's warm. So in high infested areas, it can uh, be really alarming when there's, when there's a lot of spotted lanternfly because they, they're quite a nuisance. Uh, they can feed in swarms. Uh, they've known, they're known to really attack orchards and uh, are great production could be at risk in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania has a lot of agricultural commodities that are really important for the United States and the world. We're the fifth largest producer of wine grapes, we're the third largest producer of juice grapes, fourth largest producer of apples, the fifth largest producer of peaches, all of which can be affected by spotted lanternfly and their feeding in mass quantities. And also other agricultural things that are um, affected would be the nursery industry, uh, which is estimated over as two to seven billion for the nursery industry, and 19 billion for the hardwoods, so logging and foresting. So, Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture enacted a quarantine, and this was enacted in 2014. It started um, township by township, and then as the spotted lanternfly spread, it was county by county. Other states now also have spotted lanternfly because of the spread. So the point of a quarantine is to slow the spread of spotted lanternfly. The people that are affected by a quarantine is everybody who lives in a place where spotted lanternfly is. So even if you're a resident, you're affected. And I have in the packets that I gave you, there's um, resident checklists. So if you're moving, if you're going from a quarantine area to a place that does not have any spotted lanternfly, you should be checking to make sure you're not moving any life stage of the spotted lanternfly around. That's how they move. So spotted lanternfly, they're not very good at moving on their own. We are the ones who are moving them. The trucking industry is moving them. There's so many pathways. I don't want to target any one pathway, but there's so many pathways for movement and it's a human assisted thing, human assisted thing that's making it move. Okay, so the life cycle. And if you are 
considering moving somewhere or if you're a business, a nursery business or any type of business that's moving, you want to know the life cycle because that will tell you what to look for for spotted lanternfly. So if you look on, I have this, spotted lanternfly permit training part two. If you flip the page over to the third page, there's the life cycle there. We'll start from the time they're nymphs. The nymphs hatch out in the spring. They are black with white dots, and they start the size of a tick, and then they get bigger and bigger until they become the fourth instar stage of the nymph. They molt, and they are black, red, and white, and then that's around the summertime, and then also in the summertime, the adults will molt, and then the adults are present July through December, and the hard frost is what kill the adults off, but then egg laying season for the spotted lanternfly is September to December. Those egg masses survive the winter. They will survive the hard frost. Um, they're kind of like gypsy moth, um, the egg masses. So the egg masses are laid in the winter, they survive the winter, and 30 to 50 eggs can hatch out of each egg mass. So that's why it's become such a nuisance and such a problem. So if you are a business that's living and working in the quarantine, um, what you should do is you should be aware of the life cycle you sh and also should take the permit test through Penn State Extension. So if you go to a Penn State Extension website, um, there is permit training material on there for businesses that are operating within the quarantine zone. Um, if you take the permit training, it will provide you with all, you assign um, one person from the business will take the permit training. It's a train the trainer course. So that person will go through the Penn State training uh, they will learn all about the spotted lanternfly, they will um, learn what the requirements of the quarantine is, and then they will relay that information to their employees. Um, the permit training then allows you to continue to do your business as long as you're following the stipulations of the quarantine. And once you go through the permit training, you will be supplied on the same packet that we are just looking at. You'll be supplied with a spotted lanternfly permit, and they, they come in many forms. So now, because the hang, orange hang tags were the original, uh, we don't use those as much anymore. Now, once you go through the training, you get an uh, official certificate. You will print a copy of that, and you will distribute it in all the vehicles that you have for your company. Because uh, Department of Agriculture is doing, uh, occasionally we do stop checks. So we work with um, the state police to um, stop vehicles and do inspections and make sure that businesses that are moving within or without of the quarantine zone um, have this permit available. Do, is there, are there any questions for me? Yes. Yes, please ask questions. <laughs> are we planning on introducing any predators? So for gypsy this? moth, are you speaking of like um, the... Uh, I, I, know, I know sometimes <laughs> when we introduce another species to counteract yeah it, it doesn't go well exactly so um there are some um predators that are in asia that are natural to that ecosystem but the problem with introducing a, something like that into the u.s is it could cause just as many problems as spotted lanternfly is causing so right now the tools that we have in our tool belt are to make sure we spread this education make sure that people know about spotted lanternfly and they're not just moving things around without checking for it. There are chemical sprays that you can use, um, but the biggest thing that the quarantine provides is time for researchers to develop tools to put in the tool belt to fight spotted lanternfly, to figure out um, what controls work the best chemically, to figure out um, whether there's like physical exclusion barriers that could perhaps work for these nursery productions. Um, but as far as introducing uh, a non-native predator for it, that would have to go through USDA and it would take a really long time and could have negative repercussions. Okay. The second question is, in Berks County, we, we saw a picture of a tree and it was just, it was covered. Almost, covered. Yeah. Um, so they were the first. Mm -hmm. Now, how is that counting in comparison to the beginning? Is it much, much worse? No. Part? No. So w whatever, are, yeah, what are they doing to reduce the population? So everybody in Pennsylvania, at least, uh, we've got, oh, I should have come with some numbers for you, but uh, 
People have taken the permit training course. I believe the last time I checked, it was around 23,000 businesses that have taken the permit training course. And I'm a plant inspector. I also make sure people are com that are shipping interstate have compliance agreements. So if you're shipping products out of state, you need to also be in compliance with other states' quarantines, and they might have an external quarantine against Pennsylvania spotted lanternfly. Um, so to answer your question, the we're doing a lot. <laughs> we're doing a lot for it. And in Berks County, uh, they actually, there's this phenomenon that happens with spotted lanternfly, as well as the educational outreach and the permit training. Spotted lanternfly has this weird thing that does, it, it kind of does this donating thing. So it, it moves outward in concentric circles, um, naturally. And in the initial infestation in Berks County, it's the populations are kind of reduced. And then it kind of feeds, it goes into a new territory that's not as fed on, and then it starts to feed there. And the populations get really high, and then they then drop, and then they kind of move out. So Berks County was the initial, and those populations seem to be a little bit lower. But if you look at like concentrically around Berks County, those populations are higher. And researchers are studying why that's going on. I don't think anybody is, is quite sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does that lady have an extra pamphlet about that? I would be most interested in having one. I passed around. I'm sure that there are some he, extra. He came in a few minutes late. John, we'll make sure we'll get yeah. there. Okay, okay. That, okay, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Thank you for reaching out. Commissioner, I don't know if you saw photo five, and this is on the handout part one. It's yeah. actually that's the one, only one I got. I can yeah, uh, the other one is the Penn State. Oh, one. This is one. But what's interesting is when I first looked at the photo, I just saw apples, right? And oh. it wasn't until I looked back closely at it that I realized, oh yeah, the infestation, which is what you're describing. Yeah, um, this this is the photo that he's talking about. This is an apple orchard, and this was in southeast Pennsylvania. This particular picture was taken, and there is swarming going on on this. Spotted lanternfly, right around the time they start laying their, their egg masses with, during their mating season, they also have this phenomenon of swarming. And um, the swarming results in things like this. Uh, the bugs feeding, going into like a feeding frenzy. Like they're, they're going crazy. They're, they're having a blast on this apple tree. Same that there's, there's a grapevine here. They love grapevine. Wild grapevine. I've seen them on Virginia creeper. I've seen them feed on everything. But they're really only at risk. The, the things that are at risk are the, the orchards, the vineyards. They're obviously slowing down um, different agricultural and other business pathways. But uh, we should be worried about our vineyards and our orchards. Okay, I was going to ask you what particular fruit tree or type of tree that they target. So if you look at one of the handouts that I gave you guys, the Penn State Extension one, it should have a, a tree of heaven somewhere there. So tree of heaven is um, an invasive species of tree that was introduced from Asia. It is spotted lanternfly's favorite food source. And unfortunately, it was introduced as an ornamental tree years ago. And so when spotted lanternfly showed up, they, ha they had their favorite food source here already. And But even if tree of heaven wasn't here, they feed on 70 plus plants, vegetables. They feed on everything. They're very happy. They don't feed on conifers. Um, at least it's not recorded that they like to do that. Uh, so we don't really have to worry about them feeding on that. That doesn't mean they won't be present on conifer trees because they could just be in high levels. But um, walnut is a big one. They really like birch. They really like red maple. Uh, sumac you'll find them on, but Tree of Heaven is like the canary in the coal mine. If you have a Tree of Heaven tree you're, and you have a spotted lanternfly infestation, that is where I recommend you go look because they will definitely be on that tree. They like red maple. So they, it depends on what's available to them. Uh, we've seen them on, like I said, 70 plus host trees. So if you're unaware, uh, Tree of Heaven is widely spread in the US and uh, it looks like sumac except the leaf, the leaf margins are a little bit different. And when you crush the leaves, it smells like um, rancid peanut butter. So that's how you can tell it's a tree of heaven and not sumac. But if you need um, materials for determining that, Penn State Extension has all the materials for that. So when you started, did you say that you're gonna put out a press release to the Department of Agriculture on a quarantine for Lycoming County? No. Oh, okay. No. So this photo, we're still out of the quarantine area. Currently, Lycoming County is not included in the quarantine. 
However, any counties that might be added are going to be released, I was told, will be released in a press release tomorrow. So. Oh, so they may. Have yeah, I don't know how many counties will be added. They may be added, but it won't be released to the public until tomorrow. So I tried to ask them whether like Cumming County was one of them, but um, I can't say anything until the press release happens. Right. And uh, they also wouldn't tell me, so I can't tell you. <laughs> when, it, when it says on the back of this card, uh, destroy the eggs, cover them in hand sanitizer or rubbing alcohol. Yes. Does rubbing alcohol have any side effects to the trees or anything like that? No, it shouldn't. So when, when they're saying cover them in rubbing alcohol, they're not saying cover the tree in rubbing alcohol. So the preferred method of destruction of egg masses, if you want to hold that card up, I think I have some extra too if anybody wants them, they're over there. But that's a card scraper. So it's got an identification of what it looks like, what an adult looks like, what an egg mass looks like. And to destroy egg masses, because egg masses could be present from September all the way until May, uh, what you want to do is you want to scrape the egg mass into alcohol, which is why they say hand sanitizer, because most people have that available. Okay. However, if hand sanitizer is not available, you can always smash the egg masses and then scrape them off, because they lay 30 to 50 eggs, and you have to squish the eggs before you scrape them off the tree. So you want to make sure they're dead, which is why we recommend putting them into an alcohol hand sanitizer type solution. Very good. Here you go, Commissioner. Thank you, sir. <laughs> You're welcome. Could you fill that up, please? Yeah. Okay. Casey, counter one. <laughs> But we appreciate the time. Sure. Yeah, thank uh, you so much. And it is a, it, it's a major issue. I spend quite a bit of time on it in my position, and it wasn't here when I first started, and, and it is now. <laughs> so um, I hope that the, the public is aware of it. I think the biggest thing is that educational outreach is the biggest thing, is when you don't know, new establishments, new populations can be established because someone moved from... Pennsylvania to a state that didn't have it, and then they took their um, some things that were stored outside, picnic tables, you know, maybe they had some chairs, some lawn patio furniture, and then they moved that to that new state. Those egg masses hatched in the springtime, and now a different state has a uh, population. So if the public doesn't know, then it's still going to spread, even if the businesses do know. They're hitchhikers. They're hitchhiking They're like pests. There's or... actually a really good picture in. I gave all of you guys all three of the PowerPoints. Um, I'm going to try and find the one picture. So it is in Spot and Landerfly Part 2, Quarantine Zones in the Life Cycle, slide 8 on page 4. It looks like this. Um, there is a bug on a car there. They can hang on, you know, 70 plus miles per hour on a car. They've got these little um, sticky things on their feet that really helps them stick to things, so they're not going to fly off. Um, See, I don't have. I, I don't think I have part two either. I just have part one. one? Yeah. Well, I'll make sure. I'll make sure. Okay. Here, you can have this. One. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. If you look at that on the other page. That's on the tires. Yeah. That's on a piece of tractor equipment. Yep. But that's the next stage right there. So if you're not checking your stuff before you're moving around, you're spreading spotted lanternfly. And if you're in a heavily infested area, tuck your pants into your socks. Like they, they are leaf hoppers. They'll just and they're not afraid of us. Almost looks like a hive of bees. Yeah, except they don't. They won't hurt you. They're not going to bite or sting. They're actually, I've held them before. They're actually, pre they're pretty. They're a pretty bug. They're an interesting bug, but they're really devastating to the United States if if um, they start. Doing what they're doing to our southeast orchards, they do that everywhere, it's going to be bad. But uh, recommendations, if you're in an infested area, don't park under a tree line. Um, park away from a tree line. Make sure your windows are rolled up if you're in an infested area because then the hitchhiker will get in your car. They like warm, sunny sides of things, so if your car gets hot, it's going to be on your car. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Here, I and thanks to Matt Long from the Conservation District yeah, thank you, Matt. <coughs> and Penn State Extension, as always, there to uh, help us. Penn State Extension is where you will find all of your resources that are non-quarantine related. The quarantine stuff would be Department of Agriculture website. <coughs> thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> okay, moving on to action items. 
4.1. Commissioner seeking your approval on the appointment uh, of the following for the Lycoming County Zoning Hearing Board. Dan Clark, alternate member to full member, term starting 24 March 2022, ending 31 December 2025. Okay, I have a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. Any questions or discussion? Thank Mr. Clark for his service. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All favor say aye. 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 So period. 4.2, 4.3, my team. Morning again. Um, the Good first time I have for you is um, vote to approve the memorandum of understanding with West Brunswick Shock and Alcohol Commission. Um, there are additional FEMA public assistance funds available under Category B, which is um, the protective measures. And um, what West Branch Shock and Alcohol plans to do is use those money for emergency housing for those people that lack permanent housing, which is an eligible expense under this funding. And we would just serve as the pass through for this. Okay, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. A uh, second. All your side? Aye. 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 So carry. <coughs> um, the next item is just to approve an amendment to your current memorandum of understanding with Roads to Freedom Center for independent living of North Central PA. Um, we're just extending the date so that they can continue to um, utilize funding under the same funding source of uh, FEMA public assistance, again, for Category B as it relates to non congregate shelter. Okay, we have a motion. I'll move to approve. A second. All favor say aye. Aye. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, 4.4. Ken, George. Good morning, Commissioners. This is an agreement um, with air management to make some electrical changes um, during the HVAC build. Um, we found some code issues that needed to be repaired. Um, do they have a target date when completion is going to be up? We do not. Okay. It is a, a tremendous undertaking. It is. Uh, and, and now you can see the work that they're doing and, and how intense it is. And, you know, when you, when you look at a $3 million project, you say, what the heck's worth that? But man, I'm telling you what, it, it touches every piece of that building. It does, absolutely. So, so they're doing a great job from what I can see. Yeah, they're doing a fantastic job. The biggest issue right now is supply chain. Um, even some of the small parts they're trying to get, they have to wait three and four weeks for. And some of the bigger equipment um, just keeps getting pushed out further and further. And, you know, until we actually get that, we, we can't get a date in. We were over to, to observe what they're doing, and they are doing a tremendous job. And, and it is a very large undertaking. It is, yes. And the good news is that that HVAC system should last at least 30 years. I would say yes, yes. Over at TSP, it's so. Good, good, it's going to be efficient and it's going to serve the county for a long time. Yep. Well, the old system's almost 30 years. Yeah. Okay, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. Uh, I'll second. All fair say aye. 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 So, Carrie, thank you, Ken. 4.5, Jerry Kennedy. <coughs> Morning, commissioners. Morning, Kennedy. Uh, what you have here today is a uh, request to approve the software and maintenance for the assessment office um, software for $114,858.89. It is a 2022 budgeted item. Okay, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. Any questions or discussion for Mr. Kennedy? So what all does this provide? And, and I, it's Tyler Technology, and we have in the county been moving uh, a lot of software programs to Tyler. There are a couple. A couple, okay, but there's uh, like the assessment, and uh, we're trying to tie everything together. We just were presented uh, another software program from Tyler. Uh, who was that? Um, yeah, what was it? Anyway, we want to make sure that you're in the loop when when some of our directors are are looking or purchasing uh, their that software. That's a very good thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sometimes it happens, though. Right? Was it the treasurer's office? No. 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 I can't remember. <coughs> the treasurer. 
trying to think what it was. I, I, I don't remember, but it was uh, it's something that we, we thought, oh, is it a pathonitary? That's Teleosoft. That was yeah. Teleosoft. Teleosoft has a big footprint here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Very good. Okay. So this is the renewal of the contract that we have ongoing with them. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's a 10 budget. Yep. Okay. I'm to approve. I'll second. All clear, sorry? Aye. 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 So here. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you, Jerry. 4.6, Jason York. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, Commissioners. Commissioners, for your approval today is a uh, purchase of 2022 John Deere backhoe. Uh, we will be trading in a 2004 Cat 420 backhoe. Uh, finished price total amount will be $102,511.74. This purchase will go through the source well uh, purchasing program, uh, just like the CoStar system that we use. This is a 2022 budgeted item. Okay, a motion. I'll move to approve. A second. Any discussion or questions for Mr. Yorks? No, but we would be remiss, Mr. Yorks, if we didn't tell these folks in the audience that this is coming out of, because we have a new gentleman here also, one of the township supervisors from Loyal Side, that these come out of the revenue of the landfill, so it doesn't impact the taxes that all of our good citizens pay. I'm glad to see you always on your, on your game. And you sound better this week. Yeah, yeah, I do. It's, it's good to have you here. Usually you're on the phone. Well, we are over at our recruitment uh, job fair that the county is hosting today over at the Train Transit Good. building and third floor. How is that going? Excellent. It's a nice setup, nice venue. We'll yeah. be talking about that, Commissioner Commons. Okay. Yeah, for attending. Great. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Mr. Yorks. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Uh, Kristen, are you on the line? I am. Good morning, Kristen. All right. Good you morning. Um, my action item is a budget revision. Um, and the budget revision that is on your in front of you is to move funding from the coronavirus the 2020 CD um, CDBG fund in the amount of $8,985 from both the American Rescue Workers and the Support Housing Program, which is done through staff, into the Center for Independent Living's rooftop air conditioning unit. Um, this amount of funding, and I have that number, that $8,985 uh, each for a total of $17,970. Um, I would put a caveat on the action item that the um, maximum amount of allocation could be up to 51.98% of the total project cost. Um, just to make sure we don't go over that percentage amount, which is a requirement of, of the state. The situation is that the coronavirus response funding through the CDBG programs is just completely separate from ARPA funding, CARES Act, all of those other pots of funding that are for the response to COVID. Um, this was particular allocation through the CDBG program. As you know, CDBG is heavily regulated and we are having a lot of trouble expending the funds through these rental mortgage and utility assistance programs. Um, and we believe that the Center for Independent Living's rooftop air conditioning unit, because it is an airflow and ventilation issue, would be a place where we could spend some of the CV funding. Um, and this would not, I do not believe that it would impact negatively the availability of funds for the rental mortgage utility assistance. Obviously it decreases that total amount, but I do not think that amount will be spent within the timeline of the grant, which is by the end of August. So um, that's my proposal is to start to move some of these CV funds so that they can get expended um, where they can. And um, I hate to see it go from the rental mortgage utility assistance, but we just aren't able to find enough qualified individuals who are um, behind enough on their rent and mortgage that they need help but not enough that they are, and enough that they would be evicted or foreclosed on, but that are only a few months behind because what we, we, we have to have those individuals at a point where they are being evicted 
but we can't have it like a year or two behind because we can only invest up to three months worth of funding and it needs to be preventing homelessness. So if they're, for example, 12 months behind on their rent um, and we can only help for three months, we need to know where the other seven months or, but yeah, not seven, obviously, um, where the rest of that funding is coming from to pay for all 12 months that are behind. And it's just really a heavily regulated program and I don't think it's the best source the CDBG funds for this particular program, and so moving it to the Center for Independent Living rooftop project would uh, maximize the, the use of those funds. Okay, any questions? Okay, hearing none, can I have a motion? I'll move to approve. I'll second. All favor, side? Aye. 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 So carried. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you. Commissioner okay. comment. Yes, today we have a job fair going on over at the Trade and Transit um, Center um, for county jobs. We have about, I believe, 40 open, and we have our HR director over there with different department heads um, promoting these jobs, and hopefully we can fill some of them. As um, we were just returning from CCAP, we uh, heard from many counties that are faced with, faced with um, hiring crises. Um, throughout their counties, not just in the uh, public sector, but also in the private sector. Uh, it's very tough to find employees, and, and uh, um, one of the uh, buzzwords we heard down there, plus we had heard it during the chamber events recently, was uh, retention. How do you retain employees, making sure that they stay uh, with, with your agency or with your with their current employment. So uh, we have that going on today. We'll report back next week on how that went. Uh, next Tuesday, we're excited to be hosting a town hall here in the Commissioner's boardroom. Uh, we'd love to hear from the public regarding the ARPA funds. Uh, what we've done over the past year is last June, uh, we met with the City of Williamsport and asked them uh, what their, their uh, target was with their ARPA funds. Um, and they expressed at the time they were, they were still in the early stages of that. And then we met three nights over the summer with township supervisors and borough council people on their needs in the townships. We wanted to hear from them. And uh, then we proceeded to meet with the water and sewer authorities throughout the county. On two different occasions, we met with them. Uh, and we met with these, the uh, housing developers and realtors. We had heard there's a housing crisis in Lycoming County. Normally there's 600 houses on the market in Lycoming County. Uh, we're approximately about 175. And uh, we have um, a housing shortage in the county, so we wanted to hear from them. And they also, the water and sewer people wanted to meet with the, the developers and the realtors, so we had a meeting with them. Um, so we're to the next stage, just meeting with the public to share with them the ideas of what we're doing. We've broken down the, um, we, we put an application online to apply for the ARPA funds. We have $54 million worth of request for $22 million. And we've broken it down into about eight different categories. And uh, we'll be going through those categories and plugging each request into those categories. And then the Board of Commissioners will be making a determination uh, in the future, probably sometime in May or early June, about how those funds will be allocated. But in the meantime, we're going to have this town hall on Tuesday, March 29th at, at uh, 6 o'clock. We hope to have a good turnout. Um, after that, then we'll be meeting with the farmers uh, in the county because agricultural is a big part of the county and we want to hear from our farmers. And then lastly, uh, speaking to the early childhood people because we know that uh, daycare and childhood is, is uh, early child care is, is very necessary for uh, parents as they're returning to work, making sure there's adequate child care for the, um, the parent uh, going back to the workforce. So that's our strategic plan moving forward, and we encourage folks to attend Tuesday's meeting. We'd like to hear from them, We'd like to hear their ideas as we share our ideas with them. We all agree that these monies are generational. They have to be spent generational. Um, they have to be for things that are gonna make a large impact on populations in this county and that they're going to last for at least a generation if not longer. So we shared our ideas with CCAP 
when we were down there. Um, they were impressed that Lycoming County has taken such a, a detailed approach. Um, a lot of counties that didn't really start from what we heard and we're looking for ideas. So uh, when we met with the CCAP, uh, they actually had a, uh, a, set, a breakout session on how to spend ARPA funds. Mm -hmm. So as we shared our ideas, they were, they were quite impressed with what we've done so far. And, uh, and we gained a few ideas from them also going forward. So that's all I have. I, I do have a few things. Um, you know, we saw the the two state troopers that were, were killed along the highway. But more importantly, you know, we're we're in, in the national news. We're seeing uh, sheriff deputies, police officers, state police officers, uh, adult probation. They're they're getting murdered, and it, it it's and it's occurring, you know, more than what we think. And um, the sheriff uh, brought to us uh, uh, a virtual training tool uh, that we looked at. And I think it was gonna be about $66,000, $68,000. And, and it gives them scenarios as they walk into different circumstances, you know, um, and how are they gonna react? And what should they say? It's a, a phenomenal training tool, uh, one that I, you know, I do not necessarily want to spend the money on, but I believe in today's age, you know, on both sides, where police officers have to make that split sec second uh, decision, that this tool will, will provide them the, the education needed to respond. And when you, you put that headset on, and you go through those scenarios, it's real. It's, it is really real. Uh, you can get dizzy looking at it too, but um, that's something that I, I, I think uh, we're gonna to have to be considering whether we wanna uh, use that, not only for our sheriffs, we could set up the room for all law enforcement and our, and our uh, adult probation, juvenile probation people. That's a decision that'll be coming up soon. Um, I went over to the CAC. Uh, the pandemic uh, the, had a devastating effect on, on the CAC. And um, the shows today, when they bring in a show, you know, you're looking at 50000 to to $100,000. Um, and it's just, it's just a gem of our community. Um, I think the new director there is Jim Doherty, who has been the uh, new director for about six months now. Uh, he's working hard on bringing in good quality shows, but there again, um, just turning on the lights and the expense of the building is, is, is pretty, pretty expensive right now. And um, we do have a couple, uh, I want the public to know, I want to you know, get feedback and, and my colleagues uh, to, to see if there's uh, CARES money that was, could be used for that. Uh, a request in uh, ARPA. I'm not. I'm not sure if ARPA would be be uh, an allowable use, but uh, I we will set up a meeting and talk with uh, Pat and uh, see if there's anything we can do for him. Uh, it's a beautiful facility and uh, it educates a lot of our our youth, uh, not just from Lycoming County but from all over. Um, you talk about the the job fair. Uh, that we're having today. That was one of the topics uh, at CCAP, and um, it made me wonder. We, we just had a new HR director hired here. She's doing a fantastic job, Jessica. And one of the, uh, one of the things she noticed was that we don't have many minorities working for us. Um, and, and she's right. Uh, and you know, you question that. But our issue is getting them to apply, okay? And um, so that's the question I asked the, this lady, the instructor. I said, well, how do we do this? Where, where do we go? And why do you think they're not applying? And you know, could it be educational? We talked about this, Commissioner. It was uh, educational background or, or they don't feel that they're, they're uh, qualified 
You know, not every position in county government, you have to have a bachelor's degree or, or a college degree, or even a high school degree, okay? Uh, and uh, what can we do to reach out to the minority um, uh, population and, and get them here? And one of the things she said is you go to their churches, you know, let their churches know, you know, because that's where the, a lot of people gather, and uh, let them let them know what's available. But more importantly, to, to let them know that what you offer, you know, um, there are skilled and unskilled positions, and uh, as you get more experience, that that gives you credit for the education. Uh, so it's really important that we we make an effort, and believe it or not, part of the training was TEDx. Oh, with the TEDx. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, we just uh, had a proclamation for TEDx. I, it's the first time I heard it from uh, when we did the proclamation. Right. But uh, what was amazing is that there are different topics that that, that arise and, and they'll do that topic, you know, in the next month or something. So I was pretty impressed with the overall uh, uh, class there. Uh, and the last thing, uh, I sit on the assessment taxation board, and uh, if, what, last year we were at uh, 69, 70% in our, our common level ratio, which doesn't mean a whole lot to people. So we're 60 last year. Pardon? We're 60. 60, okay, we're the down, year before. Now we're down to, we're down to 51. 51. 51. And, and what does that mean? That means 49% of our values are not correct. 49%. <laughs> so when you take a look, and, and we, I just looked at the, uh, the property over there by the golf course that just went up for sale. It's for sale for $395,000, $75,000. The assessed value was 90, okay? We're seeing this daily. Um, my grandson-in-law, right? Um, he just purchased a house. That, you know, the assessed value is under a hundred thousand, and it's two hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Now, doesn't mean a lot to most people, but what it does mean to the majority of people is that if we don't do a reassessment, everyone gets taxed disproportionately. That's a problem. It's a major problem. Instead of solving the problem, and, and, it's, and it's painful, trust me, it's painful. But we tax everyone. If you're not gonna do a reassessment and get those values back in the line, and the people that own the more expensive homes are most likely able to afford more in their taxes. And we don't do that, then everyone gets taxed. And, and it has a crippling effect. Uh, I wish I could say, uh, with uh, being definite, that this is how it will work, but it's complicated how it, uh, uh, an assessment works, you know, because they say a third, a third, and a third. But right now, what we're seeing is like, it's just out of control, and everyone's raising their taxes. Uh, so we, we have to look at it, maybe we can get more information on, out to the public on how it all works and uh, try to try to get this solved. On that point, correct me if I'm wrong, but if, if, if a business or an individual appeals their taxes and the appeal is granted that they, they bring in uh, showing that the value is over, yes. the assessed value, they then are allowed to get the discount down to the, the 51%, right? I mean, that's the significance of that number, but but they, um, when you when you appeal, you're opening yourself up to uh, an assessment. Right. Absolutely. So then we or the the, the appeals board right. will elevate that to what it what it is, and then give the discount. Right. Okay. So, but the point is, we've seen numerous situations where we've had to lower the amount of taxes that Businesses. some of the WalMarts and Lowe's, sure. and, and I'm not naming out anybody in particular, just business, big box stores, yeah. uh, the like coming mall, right? Reduction in what, what they could be assessed. Uh, so 
That was forty million, and what is it down to now? Twenty-four, I think. I think it's even less. Seventy-nine thousand dollar reduction. Seventy-nine thousand dollar reduction in taxes. But here's here's the so, issue. Yeah, those those municipalities lose school board school districts lose all that money. Right. revenue. It has right. to be it has to be made up so by the residential. Right. So it's it's getting pretty difficult out there right now, and um, we'll see what happens. Yeah, your point is that the, the the reassessment that we need to do would basically apportion the taxes more fairly among people. Yes. Right? And and by law they can't go up more than I think five percent. Right? So it's not a way to raise revenue, it's a way to distribute okay. But that's the overall. That's the overall. Okay, right? you can't go up more than five percent in the overall. Right. But I could but an individual may, may go up, yes, more. yes, yeah. because you're underpaying, right? Because you're underpaying, so you're not really paying more. You're paying your fair share. Yeah, overall can't go more than five percent for the county. I don't like to put it that way, but because I don't think anybody should pay thirty thousand dollars in taxes. Well, I don't think I should pay twenty six hundred to two thousand six hundred dollars in county taxes on my property either. Right. I'm not overwhelmed with that. Right. Yeah. Nobody's going to be overwhelmed, but it's very difficult until until uh, our legislature decides, hey, there's a better way of doing it. You know, we, we have to... We had a discussion down at CCAP, yeah. you know, a better way of doing this, whether it be a earned, earned uh, income tax, combination of that with, with sales tax, and allowing each individual county to make their own decisions across the state, uh, because what's good for Philadelphia isn't good, necessarily good for Lycoming County and vice versa. So, um, then we've had that discussion, those discussions too. Yeah, sales tax, yeah. county options. <laughs> no, no, no easy solution, and no commissioner wants to really do a reassessment. I, I get it. Sometimes it's suicidal, but but regardless, it needs to be done. But there's some expense to it. There's yeah, the expense to it. Yeah, our our expense would be somewhere around the four million dollar to to do a reassessment. That's a lot of that's a lot of money. What if our counties to the East here, just is it Luzerne? I just Tioga's doing one. Tioga's doing one, right Tioga's doing yeah. one but I think a couple of weeks ago I saw that there was a two-one vote to do it. And I think, yeah, I think you're correct. Yeah. I think it was Luzerne. Luzerne, yeah. Okay, that's all I had. You have any questions? No. Okay. Anything from the public? I have one quick question for Mr. Masera. You talk Mark, about community arts Mark, center. Excuse me. Could you come to the podium, please? Oh, absolutely. Please, we're, we're live streaming. So that way anyone out there can see you. You can just state your name. Mark Sorbin with Lois Lock Township. Great, thank you. Um, just a quick question. You talked about the Community Arts Center funding. Um, I'm just curious if they've ever replaced the roof. The reason I'm asking is I'm on the First Community Foundation Board. We denied their request based upon that they're part of Penn State University. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, maybe we made a wrong decision. I'm just curious to know that they did they get that fixed yet? Because if that roof's not fixed, I think uh, that's... I, I, I can't answer that. I think they did get the I, roof. I believe they, it was fixed Yeah, I'm almost year. positive. Because yeah. it was the same, what you just said, if you can't get the roof fixed, you can't... No, I'm almost okay. positive they did. Because okay. then they were, they were fixing the damage that was inside. Okay. And, I, and I look at yeah, both of our colleges as, as partners to our community. Um, they employ a tremendous amount of people, mm -hmm. one. Uh, and and they're, they're getting more and more engaged with downtown, uh, which is which is critical. Yeah. Uh, so we're starting to see a migration of students coming in into our restaurants and you know, our taverns and whatnot. Uh, but but both of those presidents, of both the co colleges have been been uh, great partners uh, for downtown and and Lycoming County. Mm -hmm. um, and I just I know that they're they're hurting there, and and it's not cheap right now for them to, to bring in a show. We don't want that building to sit. We don't want it to sit. And even right. if we we uh, approach our our um, our hotel tax, what is that? Well, the question of whether we maybe we direct the chamber to put an allocation towards that each year to you know we have 1.2 million or something coming in and we say look 
you know what, put X amount towards it each year so that there's something they can count on that's steady. Uh, because I, I've had constituents, and as I sit here, I agree with you about the, about the community arts center, but I've had constituents say to me, listen, if I want to go to a football game and it costs X amount to do the football ticket, I pay it. So if someone wants to go to a show and it costs X amount for the show, then they should pay it. Why should my tax dollar go? So we can look at things that way, or we can look at it as, first of all, there's a whole educational component when we get kids to go to musicals and to go to other shows at the Community Arts Center, when they bring the schools from all over the county, they come. You know, there's a tourism component to it, when we get people from outside the area Maybe they're here on a business trip and they see, oh, they can go to the community arts center. Maybe they go to a show there and then they <coughs> decide, geez, I like this town. I think I'm going to come back. Or maybe I like this town. I might even decide to move here. So I agree with you. It's an important asset that we have downtown and we have to figure out ways to also educate our own community about the fact that when we use different funds for it, now obviously very controversial to use real estate funds. So then you look at what other funds you have. But when we do that, we do it to try to enrich the whole community, which is what you're talking about, I think. Yeah. And we, there again, like the, um, the paddle boat. You know, Hiawatha. You know? Hiawatha, yeah. There's, there's a two, two years. It's been very difficult. And so how do we, how, as a community, mm -hmm. uh, how do we look at that? Do we, we place a value on it? Should we support it? Should we subsidize it? Uh, you know that those are decisions that have to be made because they're they're going to face the same thing again. Uh, yeah, I I want to see them, you know, uh, being a black. But in reality, can they be? Yeah. Right. And so, what value? What worth is it to our community? Uh, and and those are the tough decisions we and, have to make. And you know, as I say, I talk about people coming here, but also the own our own folks' quality of life for those of us who live here, right? To be able to say, okay, you can go downtown Williamsport to see, uh, you know, a singer or a performer. You don't have to drive to State College. That has people say, I want to stay here. Mm -hmm. I want to continue living here. So, it's, and the same thing with the, you know, the, the thing about the Hiawatha is there's not a lot of places you can take kids, but you can take kids on the boat. So, you know, for them to charge 35 a ticket is not realistic, right? But when you can take, when you can have an event and bring the kids on the boat, it's, it's a quality of life, so. I think one time in the street you take it out of, and, and I agree tax dollars should be used for it. Act 13 funds could be, could be yeah, it happen, it happen. Happen. Yes. Yep. Okay. I would just close with uh, Mr. Macera that, you know, we, like I said, we denied their request for the roof under the foundation, but everybody on the foundation does not want to lose Community Arts Center either in our community. So. If you have a contact, and you know, remind them to, to reapply again okay. if there's things they're looking for there too. As well. And Mark, we we want to thank you for your service. How long have you been a uh, Blue Sox? Twelve you? years, and I'm, yeah. I'm on my thirteenth year starting right now. Third term, yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so for your service. Third and last term. Yeah. Third and last term. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Thanks. Good morning, John. Good morning, Commissioner. It's been a long time since yeah. I've been here. John, before you start, we want to pass our condolences on passing the year. Uh, that's what I want to make public service announcement about. I'm not here to for that. My wife was diagnosed with stomach cancer back on in September in stage four. Uh, stomach cancer is almost virtually undetectable, but two of the warning signs for it are. And I think my wife had stomach cancer for better than two years before we started in September. If somebody suffers from constant heartburn or acid reflux and they take medicine, doesn't cure, get them to the doctors because my wife took Tums and things like that and didn't do anything, okay? But, uh, it's, it's like with stomach cancer, it's very hard to detect, okay? And when it is detectable, like my wife, uh, when it was detectable at stage four, my wife lasted five months. The average, average, pardon me, the average uh, expectancy when you have stage four cancer, 20% will survive one year, the rest are months. 
and it is hard seeing an individual go downhill like my wife did in four and a half months, lost nearly 40 pounds. And so if you have, and this is, I'm saying this to everybody here, if you have somebody that is constantly suffering from heartburn, you know, and taking the tums and stuff like that, insist that they go to a medical doctor, and if they don't get any satisfaction, go to another source. Uh, you know, um, because in anybody that says like that, the life can't turn around on a dime. It really does. It really hurt. Okay, what I'm here about today, mostly, there's been a great deal of talk with for the community center, I'll call it the community center in Jersey Shore, which is going to cost about uh, ten and a half million dollars. I thought the county was out of the trying to uh, leasing buildings. I was to the last borough council meeting, and it turns out that uh, if the county comes in and puts the magistrate's office there, along with the police department, they would be leasing space. Am I correct? I don't think our plan is to lease space. Our plan is to make a, a, a lump sum payment so that we will own the space, the county will own the space. What, what we won't have to be duplicative of is things like engineering plans and those kinds of things, because, and, well, and the, the well, greater well, part. Okay, of please let me, the rest of it. What, 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 I was definitely told that you, the county would be leasing space from them and also to the, for the police department and what up there with it. And from the meeting that, uh, that I read on in Penn, uh, online with everything is that uh, northcentralpa.com from the meeting that took place on January or February the 22nd. Penvest strategy said that there would be a tax savings to the pay, pay to the taxpayers uh, for this new building. Well, I asked at the uh, la the last borough council meeting exactly if they ran a cost analysis study and what the cost savings would be. You know what the answer was? You know, wasn't done. You know, uh, I, I really think that uh, people, there has to be some kind of uh, other planning done in Jersey Shore to get the two communities, get the two power companies to merge, get them to move into a building, and also along with the EMT, and then look at purchasing another property up there. Put the police station on, leave the bar, city, leave, leave, leave county where the borough, borough offices exactly where they are. And the other thing that I think is more important to say is what loss you run. That has to be taken care of before anything else. Uh, you know, you can build a new building, but if you don't take care of your infrastructure, and, and it's time for everybody, I know a friend that lives up near the Y has a business, he's had some. Smyer Nick cave-ins in his property. This situation with Washington Run has gone on long enough. And when a businessman asked up there the last for our council meeting, when are we going to do something about Washington Run? So John, we put in requests for, for, for funds for Washington Run. Our play department's working on it actively. Um, it, it is on on the top of our radar. Uh, another another issue on top of our radar is, is the water. Uh, your water system up there is 108 years old. It uses wood filters. Through our through our meetings with the water authorities and the sewer authorities, we've discovered this. We met with them privately. They put in requests for ARPA monies, which we'll make a decision on coming up. But there are some major issues up yeah. there that definitely yeah, yeah. need. I, I, I yeah. understand this. Yeah. So these yeah. are issues that we're you working on, and well, we're not and ignoring. The other, and the other, and the other, and the most important. Um, what concerns me most about if you put a community center up with the fire company is, I was told that they would have to construct it in sections, you know, wait till the new building, part of the new building is constructed and then move the fire company. You know. uh, with the West Company up there and what they've added for, uh, for employees and the traffic and what the school district may do and how the community and how that community center is. There's going to have to be something done about the safety of the children that come up, walk up out of the Boca Street every day. Mm -hmm. Because if you've got everything there, and with the truck traffic and everything else, there's going to have to be something worked out with the school district and school children because they walk. There's a crossing guard on my corner. I live on the corner of Mount Pleasant. But from there on, 
it's um, no crossing parts, okay. Up at the top of the hill, Bassler, Bassler Street comes in there. There's a lot of truck traffic comes up there. And in the future, if that community building is built, uh, there's going to be a lot of traffic in that in the town. And something's going to have to be done to take into consideration to work with the school district on the safety of the children coming up through there. Because the school district is short on crossing guards at least. And that's my main consideration. Because, gentlemen, I'm going to be true for my situation. I'm going to be out of this country. I can't afford to keep my I'm not complaining or anything like that. But, uh, I have too much to handle. I have been here for a long time. But my main concern is, is just washing up. You can build a new building up there with it. With it. But the main emphasis is washing up. You get the state representatives in here, get the fire companies, get things in order. Because the fire companies in Jersey Shore do not get along, and they're competing for the same funds. Thank you, John. Thanks, John. Yeah. Uh, what, you know, what's, what's the chances of getting together with these fire companies and getting some of the state representatives and setting everybody down with meeting and, and, and borough officials so everybody's on the same page? But really, what really we're also doing is what depends on when the com companies out there trying to get funds for and states in the meeting when, when people are there that some, this is going to cut, save the taxpayers' money. And then when you ask, there's no answer because nothing's been done to back the amount of blood. Thank you. Thanks, John. Anything else from the public? We have a guest here. We want to come on up. Yeah. Jeremy, you want to come up and introduce yourself? Hi, uh, I'm Jeremy Stout. I just started uh, North Central PA this week. Um, I will be covering these meetings on an ongoing basis. Uh, pleasure to meet everyone. Great, thank you for showing up. And, yeah. Yeah, nice to have you. Where, where, Jeremy, where did you move here from? Uh, uh, I moved here from just outside of Pittsburgh. Uh, I was living in Irwin at the time. I'm from Murraysville originally. Oh, great. What uh, brought we you to like, our community? Yeah. Um, I uh, had a, one of my best friends from college is uh, from here. So I visited a couple times, and I uh, noticed that there was a job opening at a paper up here. So I applied and uh, luckily got the position. Great. Awesome. Well, welcome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, our thanks to North Central PA for recruiting people from outside the area. Good That's, news source. Yeah. It is. OK. Um, online comments. Here we have a few. <coughs> um, Jacob Stopper first. Thomas Adams. Good morning. We as a nation are under attack by global elites. I think we, as a Christian nation, are under God's judgment, and we must turn our hearts and minds to a repentance from all ungodly debauchery that we, the Christians, have allowed to permeate all areas of our society and government because of our churches voluntarily stepping out of the political governing and educational arenas. I am encouraging everyone to be aware of the push by the WHO for a global system of vaccine. From Joey Dazba. I love the idea of more training for law enforcement of all types. Perhaps if it was a countywide training aid, the cost could be shared by more communities slash departments. Thank you for all you do. Thomas Adams, I hope we can find more ways to help our public servants in law enforcement and first responders. A couple of things everyone can do is to not comply and when doing business or going to restaurants, do not use QR codes for purchases, even for coupons. Do not do business with any companies that require QR purchasing. Thank you for this opportunity to share my share with my community, Tom Adams. That's it. Anybody else? No. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Our next meeting will be. We've completed our agenda, so our next meeting will be on Thursday, March thirty-first, at ten a.m. Right here in this room. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Have a good day. And I should have said thank you for the condolences. Yeah, you're welcome, John. Oh no. Sincerely, yeah. Yeah.
very difficult. So, John, thanks for bringing that to people's yeah, attention. Because I think too often we we see all the commercials to use these these uh, over the counter things, and it masks it. Yeah. yeah. John, thanks for coming down. Yeah. yeah. But you guys got it. This community, community Jersey Shore, cannot handle two things at one time. There's not the financial stuff that. And when I'm there, Sean had no answers. We got to get money, okay? But Washington, if that goes, as Rick says, yeah. it's. That your water. We are. We just so you know, yeah, we've that, got that. Your water is huge right now. Yeah, it's on our radar. Thanks, John. Thank you. Yeah, it's like sinuses.